Shane, uh, do you want to kick off? Oh, you would put me in the hot seat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I appreciate all the, uh, uh, engagement that, uh, we've been getting. Um, it is, uh, it's it's like you kind of get these like little nuggets or these little uh you know new comments every once in a while and then there's a lot of uh uh comments that you know you you kind of already seen before so um uh so you know it can be a little bit keeping up with everything but you know for those who have been keeping up awesome job and uh uh you know the different insights the different bits of knowledge um you know uh, that have been being dropped has been, yeah, just, I feel really important with understanding kind of the whole context of this, understanding where um, we want to go as an ecosystem. And ultimately with all of this, my, my, I, I kind of see my purpose is helping provide clarity. So just clarity on things, just being factual, um, not really trying to get it caught up in the, uh, uh, the really get, caught up per se on either side um, or the drama of it and more or less just be factual, just talk about what happened and then peep, you know, any, anything that's happened or anything that um, uh, has kind of come out from this and just talk about it. And then people can make decisions just based off their own conscience on, on, uh, on the facts. And I, so that's, that's kind of my position a little bit. Uh, I, I've not been sharing like too many, Kind of like personal opinions or anything like that. Uh, it, it's just been more like, hey, let's just keep things factual. Let's just say what what happened and skip through the uh, uh, skip over the um, kind of uh, yeah BS of, of 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 just having two different sides that disagree with each other. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's uh, from a broader perspective, I'd agree. Uh, I think this is one of those things where um, it's easy to have uh, a strong opinion and uh, be leading in that direction or advocating for that. We've certainly seen a lot of those uh, in the various groups uh, this last week. Um, uh, you know, to me, it's there's there's some core thought processes that need to occur around the direction forward. And I'm trying my best to be pragmatic about that and, you know, see if what the best direction sounds like to me. The market certainly hates uncertainty. So uh, we see that sort of thing uh, impacting total performance. But I've been very interested to hear what I think are many strong suggestions around uh, revisions or changes or uh, various mechanisms for oversight, all the rest of that. Uh, I'll be certainly interested to see how that moves going forward. Uh, Coffee Crusher, yeah, that's, we're, we're fairly informal here, so. Uh, I, I know. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Um, okay, I do have a question for you, Shane. So kind of, you know, as the remaining director, um, of the Pocket Foundation. So like, how do you see, like how, how the proposal has been written is that there, are, and this is just in my personal opinion, I don't see a future for DAO community members. And I kind of want to hear your, you don't have to give it as your personal thoughts, but just your acting role as director. Uh, where do you see that? Because I don't see a path forward.
Shane, if you're talking, you're muted. Have I been muted this whole time? Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I was so taken off by being called a simple director that uh uh <laughs> I forgot to unmute. Um no, uh <laughs> uh what 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 I was uh what I was saying is that that is one of the things that I'm I'm struggling with. I don't really know what the narrative is, uh kind of the DeFi narrative. Um I I guess I don't follow a lot of projects that um don't have a strong community kind of component to them. Um uh so I I, I don't know what the community narrative is. Um, like people still follow, like I, I think I think the kind of narrative is people will still follow Pocket because I get they're they're interested in the uh, utility side, but then also potentially where the action goes um, uh, with like price action or something like that. Like that's that's what's going to keep people engaged. Um, we don't really have the DAO narrative. Uh, anymore, so that's a narrative we 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 lose. Um, we also lose kind of this everyone working together uh, on the por on, on the forum with like you know talking about a strategy, vetting a strategy. Um, we lose some of that, right? So I don't know. I, I I don't really know how much people look at some of those elements uh, and find value in them. In terms of there being long term contributors. Um, I, I don't know. Like it, it, this is, it, it's not really, it's not really explained what what that looks like for long term contributors. Because because Pocket has kind of had this history of long term contributors, um, you know, participating for grants and and uh, things of that nature. Uh, but everything was just, you know very transparent, very open in terms of what what's going where. Um, so you know what. I, I don't really know what the narrative is that that gets people uh, excited, other than I guess price and utility, um, which you know some people could argue that those are the most important narratives. Uh, but it, it seems like the reason that those are important narratives in other projects is because the price and the utility is underlined with a strong uh, narrative of decentralization or strong narrative of community. Or something of that nature. I don't really know what that narrative now looks like, uh, either on the decentralized side or on the um, community side. So that is one of the challenges that I personally have with the with the proposal. Miss Kitty asks, what are people's takes on Zatar's latest post regarding oversight mechanisms? I like the idea of keeping the structure of PNF intact while carving out a specific role for Michael, but I'm unsure of the best implementation. Time limited tenure, oversight structure, spending caps. I think this is a point of conversation that has uh, generated quite a few ideas that I think have a lot of merit um, from, you know, board type structures that I've long advocated for to uh, an auditor type role uh, and and everything in between. Um, I think Zatar, as usual, has contributed a, a thoughtful and well articulated post that also points out the need for um, some legal oversight on some of the language. So that's yeah, I mean, I'm in favor of that type of thing. Other thoughts? One area I've been also struggling with, because there's always one area that I'm struggling with at a time, uh, is this um, when when trying to figure out, okay, if we if we move to a different structure, what does a different structure look like while still having, um, you know, like oversight or a board or something like that? And every time I hear those discussion, it literally comes back around to exactly what is already established with like PNF. So it, it's I, I, I see a lot of work trying to go into what other kind of structure, or maybe if we have some kind of committee or something. And uh, it, it seems like it, it gets actually more complex than what 
at least was PNF, you know, two weeks ago. Uh, it was a pretty simple structure, uh, a board, uh, and then basically 80% of funds were already controlled by PNF. Um, so, you know, moving that to 100, okay, that's, you know, that's different. Uh, the other difference is uh, parameters, uh, not all parameters were given to PNF to uh, change without reason. Right or or not without reason without, um, uh, you know without some kind of participation with the ecosystem. Right. So if you look at ARR, that literally delegated a number of parameters to PNF to control. Now what what PNF did is they communicated uh, how these parameters would be controlled. Right. Like uh. uh you know, the goal is to set 250 or 220,000, you know, pocket per day, mint rate, right? And so we'll adjust the parameters to hit that specific target, right? So there was, uh, so the, they were, the parameters were given ownership to PNF, uh, but there were certain guidelines set in place, right? So I, I uh, so where, where this is different is this is, uh, you know, give parameters and then, um, but not, you know, not have any system in place. So decisions can then be, be made entirely inside of PNF, right? Uh, or entirely within uh, or under Michael. Decisions can be made on, on what to do with these parameters. Um, they don't get communicated out like to the community or, or told to the community exactly what, uh, you know, let the community be a part of discussion on how these parameters would be used. It, it allows PNF and Michael to just make those parameter changes. So that's the difference here. Uh, it's not that uh, it's it's new to give parameters to PNF because that's already happened, uh, mul you know, multiple times with different proposals. Um, it's just give full all of them to PNF and then uh, not have you know not have the uh, a vote or anything on any parameters or guidelines within those parameters, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so that's where I get a little a, a little confused with why it needs to go the way that it went. Um, if the goal is to give ownership of parameters to someone, I mean, that's already happened in past proposals. There's nothing new about that. Um, if the goal is to give 100% of the DAO rewards to the DAO or, or to PNF, um, that's, you know, that's a very easy proposal update. Um, changing how much the DAO leaves, uh, you know, that's actually a proposal. I The week that all this went down, I had already written a sources proposal to actually introduce sources into Morse and actually have that be a huge um, marketing factor for Pocket. Uh, because, uh, yeah, any, any, all, all of these sources, uh, different blockchains out there, and especially new chains, um, they would be able to generate rewards from people using the network. And we could do this kind of off-chain for now. Uh, and then in Shannon, that would all come on-chain. And that'd be super dope. Um, but we could handle it off-chain the same way that we handle uh, the, mint, or the burn right now uh, off-chain. It would be basically the same principle as this just handled off-chain through PNF. So, uh, anyway, so with that proposal, uh, we're going to uh, want to change the amount that the DAO receives uh, to increase it so that there would be more rewards there for the DAO to use. Um, uh, or so there'd be more rewards there for PNF, I should say, to use to pay out sources um, and other Shannon initiatives as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I I don't really have a... Uh, a good answer because a lot of those things could have already been done before. Um, what, what this is doing is this is taking out the uh, the DAO side or the vote side or the like establish what the plan is prior to enacting it and uh, you know letting people discuss it and and see if there's you know an issue. And I understand that that can sometimes slow things down and people a lot of times use creds as a reason 
that uh, it like it shows that things move slowly. Um, but that also helped refine the idea, right? Uh, but then also that's it's really not super relevant to this conversation. And anytime I see creds brought up, I I try to mention that creds is about how voters are, how the DAO is structured in terms of who gets to actually vote. I don't think a director, one person should be able to decide who gets to vote and who doesn't vote. Like what system is going to decide who gets voter or, or not vote. I can totally understand the DAO giving, you know, giving a, uh, 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 ownership over parameters, uh, you know, certain parameters or the treasury or something like that to an individual, uh, which has already happened in the past. But that would be deciding how people get to vote in, you know, the new DAO or whatever DAOs to come. Uh, and that would be entirely uh, up to, you know, essentially one person. So creds really doesn't apply here. The proposals that apply here are the ones that are economic, like economic proposals. Hey, we want to do this uh, or we want to fund this. Um, even PNF hasn't really, uh, they would tell, they would let people know, hey, this is what we want to fund. Uh, and that they did that with like gateway verse. Hey, we want to fund gateway verse. They weren't necessarily asking for, uh, I don't, there wasn't any proposal that I know of. It was more of, uh, hey, with the era budget, this is what we're going to do, right? Um, and so people kind of knew what, what was coming, uh, and it was expressed prior to, so people knew where those resources were going. So giving, you know, giving a lot, you know, PNF making decisions on, hey, let's fund this, let's do this, let's go over here. Uh, it, it really had a lot of structural, uh, a lot of freedom to do a lot of things. So when we talk about establishing some kind of new structure or anything like that, I, I get a little confused because I don't know what that new structure is when we already had a working structure before. Um, and I do believe that with the right people on the PNF team, things actually were moving faster and faster and faster the more people that were on the team. So like Voitech joined uh, kind of on the, on, on the tech side. I joined on the uh, kind of Shannon and economic tokenomic side, right? Uh, and Morse passed really, or, or sorry, uh, what is it called? Um, Gandalf, the second version, passed really quickly because PNF was behind it. PNF was not behind the, the first Gandalf. Uh, they, they, didn't, they didn't really have the bandwidth. It wasn't on their radar, so they didn't participate in the conversation at all. Uh, but once they did join in the conversation, <clears throat> um, yeah, it passed very quickly. So I think we had a lot of efficiency. Uh, excuse me. Oh. Oh, pardon me. I'll uh, stop there. Sounds like the allergies have taken over. Too many allergies. Okay, no, 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 I'm back. Anyways, but, <laughs> but that, that, that basically uh, summed it up. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I need, I need someone to test my uh, water bottle. That's when I need a, uh, a cup bearer. That's, that's it. Uh, Michael says, uh, this is a good idea generally. I would like to point out that unlike other projects, Pockets community plays a crucial role in the network's success beyond just prices since we sit at the center of these blockchains. Yeah, I mean, you know, community structure has been... Uh, uh, central to a lot of the growth around here no question about that uh harry is here now do you want to bring up yeah a, can, can i jump in on that last point you just said do you think that um pnf has helped foster a stronger community and helped us align on on the ideals that we as a community all think uh, uh, are valid and strong and and worth upholding like I believe myself, I believe that PNF has done a fantastic job at um, helping us as a community to align with each other, align with our goals, and and become stronger and and more more cohesive and coherent when talking about the protocol to outsiders and. Uh, <laughs> 
yeah, I'm gonna start with Dev Fry at this end. Is that directed uh, at large or to anyone specific? Yeah, to anybody who wants to answer, because I feel like at this very crucial moment in, in, in Pocket's history, like this is the time for people to speak up. And I don't think enough people are doing that. And I feel like PNF have done wonders for this protocol. Absolute miracles. They started with absolutely nothing. And they turned it all around and they made it into something beautiful. And I, and I think that we should recognize the work that they have done, not just to make PNF better, but to make us as a community stronger and, and more mm -hmm. coherent and cohesive and, and together. And, and I think that at this very moment in time, we are about to witness. I'm going to say it. We're about to witness the end of that. We're about to witness everything disappear. So I feel like more people should be speaking up about how they like the community, how they like the things that PNF have done, and how this is something special that we've got going on and we should not let it be taken away this is a decentralized censorship resistant open unstoppable network we voted for those fucking words remember that we chose those words don't let anybody take that away from us yeah no matter who they are like, don't let anybody take what is rightfully yours. That's called theft, my friend. Like, I'm vexed, and you should all be vexed too. This is not good. Nothing that is going on right now is acceptable. This is unacceptable behavior. This is despicable behavior from a certain someone. I think you all know who I'm talking about. And I think you should all open your eyes and realize that this is not okay. This is not how people should behave, and especially people in leadership. I'll stop there. Other thoughts? We could maybe actually frame this uh, a little smaller. Uh, this call right now, uh, this has been going on how long, Jinx? For like Since three years? 20, late 2021, yeah. But yeah, so three years, right? Uh, this call has been going, going on. Sure, sometimes there were, um, you know, less people, right? <laughs> there, there's, uh, you know, and sometimes we ended early, right? Sometimes yep. we went over, right? But there was always consistent participation, right? I mean, no, no doubt about that, right? Um, I think part of the reason that drove that, that motivation to participate is because there was that sense of community, there was that sense of like, we can make decisions together. And how many proposals actually had critical moments of change in terms of, uh, uh, what people believed or what people thought about a proposal because there was a community call about it, right? I don't really know what this community call would turn into because it's like now it it it, 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 would, it would almost feel like more of like a gossip. It, it'd be more like a, a gossip meeting because there's no actual like power. No one can just go and just put up a proposal in the same way, right? Um you know, it, it like the, the smartest thing to do would be to go directly to Michael, talk to Michael, see if Michael uh, agrees with it. Uh, and then, you know, and then he could just unilaterally prove something. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't create this kind of community that I believe is met here very consistently uh, for three years now. So I guess, I guess the interesting exercise kind of going off what Harry was saying in terms of 
community, what, what would something like this, like this community call, what would it essentially become if there isn't uh, actual participation in the governance itself? A second number of these calls have been around community contributions to an open source project, and I don't see anything about that changing. Uh, when this call was preempted in favor of discussing this proposal, we had scheduled uh, Ramiro to present the workbench that they were working on. I think, you know, it's governance and community participation in a large scale open source project are two different things. And I certainly recognize what you're describing from a proposal perspective. Uh, but, you know, the fact that this is a multi contributor open source project wouldn't change. I'm actually kind of reminded of Linux, all things considered, when I look at this, given that it's also a large scale open source project and has a founder who has been known to be uh, abrupt and decisive in what he considers important contributions to the project. I mean, my one my one challenge to that, though, is uh, again, it depends on what the goals are. If like with the Linux Foundation, the only people wanting to participate in like the Linux Foundation developer chats, right? Um, or you could even say the Ethereum Foundation developer chats. Uh, you know, those are people that highly technical, highly focused, specialized, highly interested in a very particular thing. Um, and you know it, it, it you know I, I don't know the ins and out of all of that um but what i'm saying is uh I, I do think that it's a little bit of a different market than trying to reach crypto users um you know and like get crypto users engaged with a project and i feel like the governance was uh you know can be a tool for that and the proposal process even if people don't necessarily vote um yeah, we have a lot of people that are very active, even though they don't have a vote because the system has been off, uh, which I, that's what was kind of exciting about the new version of creds. Yep. So anyway, that, that's at least my thought um, within like kind of the crypto community and within, um, you know, trying to reach like, like we talk about retail or we talk about, you know, DGENs or people like that, where, uh, uh, you know, these kind of calls are more for people to come together, strategize, talk, figure shit out and then potentially go and find a way to act on it. I understand that that could still happen. It's just it's a little bit of a different, different dynamic. So that's why I was curious to apply it to this call. Like how many people would be motivated to come to this call in, in kind of a different environment? Yeah. Just to jump in first, I would be extremely unmotivated to come to a dictatorship style protocol. Like... Just to give you a bit of history, I got into crypto through Pocked. Pocked, like, I saw it, I loved it, I learned about it, Every, everything about it excited me. I was like, wow, this is such a cool project. From the governance, uh, governance, sorry, from the governance to the, to the protocol itself, to the original V1, to the, to the, like, everything about it excited me. And now, I feel saddened by it because one, like this lasts like what two week, two weeks, something like two weeks. Things have gone from all right, just how they normally were, to like. What the fuck is going on? Is, is, is this actually happening? Like, I don't think this call would be possible in a dictator-style protocol. What is there to discuss? The only person making decisions is the one at the top. He doesn't have to listen to us. He doesn't listen to us. It's proven that he doesn't listen to us because he's never on the fucking calls. He's never part of the community. He's never, he's hiding. Because he's a coward. 
he lies let's and then he the apologizes time. you try and say it's unfounded but like let's be real Grove has I'm not gonna go into that. at least one to two I'm not gonna go into that I'm not gonna go into that so calm yourself yeah good call. um this man is not a part of the community he has proven that he's not a part of the community by never being in the community discussion, the community calls. Oh, wait, the only time he shows up is to do a hostile takeover or to try and force his way into being the sole director of PNF and taking over the treasury, removing any fees for his business to use the protocol. Like, these things are not good. Anybody on the outside looking in would say this is a mess. And anybody on the inside who is not saying it's a mess is delusional. Jinx, you can tell me that I'm making a straw man argument here, but it's fucking true. I'm not gonna if tell you, you cannot a see the argument, mess that we're in, you, you are person. delusional. And I'll say that to every fucking person's face. Like, I am ashamed to have my name linked to Pockt. Like, and I am yeah, her, her, ashamed. Yeah, her, yeah no, no, I... No, I, 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 not. I like, this, this is like, you can try and make it sound like I'm, like, like I'm fucking not trying to do this or I like, like blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm ashamed of the, the way that this protocol is, has taken the last few months. Yeah. And if you yeah, are not, I feel, I feel there is something severely wrong with you. All right, enough said. I'm, I'm a, I'm a go. I might upset too many people. And I'll reiterate, as someone who's hosted this call for over three years, that far more of these calls have been around community contributions and other things that were being built in the ecosystem than were around proposals. So I don't see the purpose of the call going away. Shane? Oh, I, I, I don't have any. Got it. Okay. Miss Kitty says, re-community. In the proposal, Michael states that he wants to engage outside contributors, but there have been few details outside of that. And from the forum discussion, it's clear that there's a lot of people in the community who care enough to volunteer their time and efforts to improve the ecosystem. I'm curious how many people would leave should the proposal pass in its current form, in addition to those who have already left. But that would not be good optics. Thoughts on that? Obviously, Harry is one of them. Well, I can uh, address PNF that uh, uh, every everyone has resigned. Um, so ads will. Uh, I, I'm the only remaining like PNF uh, employee. We still have um, you know grits out with people that we work with, but um, the direct contract uh, contributors um, have all resigned at this point. So at least on PNF side, that's where it's at. I see Ramiro typing and Breezy. Wait, did you just say everyone resigned? Yes, everyone at PNF. It is a town of one right now. While wow, this is going down, <laughs> the Grand Sultan. It's a lonely kingdom. I'll tell you that. We're experiencing unilateral PNF control firsthand. I, I thought Ads was going to stay on as head of growth. Has she? She's now changed her mind. Yeah, there were a few contractors. Um, you know, uh, they it actually, all the contractors were here, uh, um, you know, they, they met with Michael, um, but, uh, yesterday both, uh, uh both officially resigned. Ramiro, 
Ramiro says it is a mess, but it seems that we're short of options. If we as community want to focus on crypto degens, the DAO won't work. Then the problem reduces to whether we trust Michael or not. I'm not a fan of Grove's behavior, but I trust on Michael and could be irrational, but it is an arbitrary choice in the end. I am curious on why, uh, if we if we as a community want to focus on crypto degens, the DAO won't work. I, I don't get that. I, I, I don't get what that, uh, the reasoning behind that. That actually, yeah, I, I don't get that. A flood of responses in route. Okay, yeah, I see. Uh, the DAO moves. Uh, the DAO can't move fast on economic choices. I, I personally, I haven't seen what the economic choices are that people that people are going to be moving really fast on. Um, that or, or that that people would have to move so fast on um, that uh, you know you just can't possibly involve the DAO. I mean, already in his existing proposal, Ramiro yourself already pointed out that certain things that he said just literally can't happen or else it would it would dramatically or drastically hurt the network if we suddenly allowed anyone to to game it by taking away the uh the burn fee right because that's the literally the mechanism that prevents gaming um so you know elements like that or or even elements of uh uh what like even in his uh proposal um it's it's not clear what's going to be changing like every single day. Just it, it just says that you know things can change or things need to change, uh, and you know things will need to be changed quickly. Um, I, I still don't know what that looks like. I don't know a protocol where like you have to make decisions daily on literally network wide parameters, um, and there's also a huge risk here, which actually has not been addressed at all. And that is how exchanges play into all of this. Um, I know that Dermot put a post because that uh, is one of his concerns. And like I've, uh, I, I actually spent a few hours like looking at exchanges, looking at their due diligence reports uh, or, or their criteria and things of that nature. And stable economics, tokenomics, is absolutely a requirement with like both Coinbase and um, uh, Binance. So they specifically say tokenomics, uh, and they specifically want to be able to map out where the network's going to be, where the network uh, goes in terms of tokens, because they've obviously, exchanges have had much experiences with listing a token, someone has a parameter, they suddenly pump it, and you know do some kind of exit scam. Like that, that's, crypto's been rich with those kind of things. And so to prevent themselves from being liable in risky projects, decentralization, and projectable tokenomics has been ways that they uh, mitigate, li mitigate liability. So in an environment that Michael is suggesting, I fundamentally don't see how that works since it goes against what they publicly talk about uh, with exchanges uh, in terms of exchanges or criteria. And an important note to this is Upbit uh, which PNF, uh, you know, got listed, I think it was this year, um, Upbit, they actually required five years of projections, right? You actually had to map out five years uh, of, of where your economics would be um, as part of their due diligence reports. So I, I, I don't know of a project that needs to fundamentally change um, parameters, you know, daily or or you know, just like so quickly in order to incentivize growth. Um, that okay. and, 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 and those kind of, and that kind of mentality is what would prevent us from getting on exchanges, tier one exchanges. So on one side, it's being promised, but on the other side, it's implementing uh, policies that, that would go against that. Um, and that's just talking about okay. on the tokenomic side, um, because then there's just... And I'll just mention this: uh, decentralization is also one of the ways that they mitigate liability. 
Um, so they specifically look at the foundation, the structure of the foundation, like Coinbase specifically goes into these details of like looking at the foundation, the structure of the foundation, who controls network parameters, how network parameters are uh, the consensus behind coming up with network parameters. Like they literally look at all of these things uh, because they have experiences with people. Now, here in the pocket community, people might be able to look at Michael and say, oh, we trust him. Um, but we have to understand that that trust stops within the pocket community because outside the pocket community, when we go to a tier one exchange, that that doesn't fly. So that's why they rely on tokenomics and things uh, and the actual structure of the foundation, the DAO, uh, and how authority, budget, and uh, parameters are all controlled. When, can I interrupt you because here? You ask why would we need to do some big parameter changes daily. We don't, we will probably don't do it daily. Daily. The problem is that, for example, if you want to <clears throat> push a change in the RTTM for Solana today, that is cheap because you do the math and it's actually not worth it to stake a, a Solana node today because the relay price is too low. Then we will take us, I don't know, maybe a, month, a whole month to establish a price for Solana and to push it. And uh, you can say the same for AI uh, relays. It will be the same case. And for every other parameter that changes how the tokenomics works, you will have a big discussion. You will have at least two weeks discussion, one week to vote, and then to... And it will take you at least a month. So it's not quick. The DAO is not quick. And when you are growing, Sometimes the need to be quick is important. And for Michael's strategy of like getting people to chase APYs and some other pretty numbers for the crypto community, the DAO is is not is not fit to do that. The DAO is fit for other stuff. And regarding what the the, the exchanges, the centralized exchanges require, like five years of of projection. I mean, what's five years in crypto? It, it, it's like eternity. It, it it cannot be taken seriously, really. And if you go deep into most projects' tokenomics, it's just they are creating money out, out of thin air. There is very, very few projects that have a, a way to prove that their token is going to be going up because they have uh, actual people wanted to buy to to have a service from their token token i mean you can say that for ethereum that it's burning to execute contracts but even bitcoin is just pure pure speculation the price so if we needed a solid tokenomics to convince uh centralized exchanges to list us i think that we already would have that done that because we can do that. We can show them, but they don't care. They will only care about the nice curve showing how the the total amount of coins is going to be in the future. I, and Mike can do that because Mike can say, okay, I, I won't go above 30% per year and you can just draw a really nice curve out of it. What will it mean? It doesn't mean anything. Like most of the things out there in crypto, they don't mean anything. The projections that are so long in, in this space, <laughs> It's like nonsense to me, at least. So the the problem that, that I see is it's not that the DAO is bad or that, that we will give up our community. It's that I think that our community or the ones that remain in our community uh, like that we did tokenomics, like we want to reach an equilibrium that is a serious coin that we show that we are not trying to scam anyone. This is not Ponzinomics. But when you put, do a step outside pocket or you go to the DEN or the crypto channel, the, the former crypto channel in Telegram, it's all hate because the price goes down. And it goes up when someone comes in and puts a lot of money because they they want to. There is no, there, there was no logical reason for the last price going up. It was pure speculation. And there is also 
pure hate when the price goes down. So who is the people that's going to give us money? Are they, are they doing their, their, their homework? Are they actually looking at what we are building or they are only looking at the APY, the total number of coins out there and the inflation rate? That is really, really low, and they are asking for less, right? It's five, and there are coins with 20, and no one says anything because the price goes up. Uh, so th this is why I think that the DAO is not working for this. And if we want to do what Michael says, that, that in my opinion, I think that's part of what the community wants to do also. It's like focus on price and, and on narratives. And you need to be fast. And, and and I I think that the DAO won't work. And, and I'm part of the DAO and I'm part of the tokenomics. And, and I'm the first one to go and and criticize everyone when they take make stupid decisions with coins. Uh, but really, what, what what else can we do? It's it's I'm trying to be pragmatic here, and I I don't think that we have many options, sadly. Yeah, and that's fair. And I'm just being pragmatic with what those options produce. So um, it might seem like nonsense trying to scope out tokenomics, um, but that's what exchanges do. And um, like with Upit, it was a developed process of doing that. Um, and so that's where people who have experience, like Dermot has had experience with working uh, to get projects on uh, exchanges like Binance. He did a number of the exchanges uh, for Pocket. So. Um, I like, and it was funny. I there there was a comment in the forum saying, "Hey, well, you know what we need to do is we need to hire someone who has experience in these areas," <laughs> and and that's literally what 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 Dermot has done. So, uh, and he he knows Pocket more than anyone, right? Uh, especially uh, to be able to talk to exchanges. So, uh, anyways, so I it's just we might not like, uh, yeah, as you say, we have limited options. And want to be pragmatic. So part of that being pragmatic is how this affects exchanges. Um, and we might not like how they do the the process, but that's how it is. Um, and in terms of being able to have a dynamic system where like change, you know, the the like if Solana, if we want to boost rewards for Solana or something like that. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I feel like that could be a very simple proposal to the DAO. Uh, like, hey, we want to be able to change, you know, these chains in uh you know and then maybe put some general guidelines on right where they can't go past like you know 3x or something like that without you know some kind of discussion or something like that right because you 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 want there to be some level of stability um within the ecosystem but i i, I could easily you know write out a proposal that said hey if uh uh these different um nodes uh, or these different parameters uh, for chains. Uh, we want to be able to move quickly and dynamically to adjust to, you know, X, Y, Z. And so the DAO will do this, uh, or so PNF will have control over these parameters. That's very easy to do. Like, and that's where in my mind, it just, it's a matter of if, if you just create a proposal that just does what you want it to do. Um, I don't really think that the DAO would have an issue uh, moving forward with that if it was just a good idea in general. Um, so, but this is kind of the opposite where it's where you vote to give the authority and then find out what, what the, or build the plan later. So that's, that's where this is different. And Romero, you said that uh, Michael also wants to be quick with spending on stuff. Uh, PNF already does that with 80% of the treasury, right? Already happens. So all, all we would change is that 80% to 100%. And that would functionally do exactly what, um, it would be the exact same speed as, uh, as what Michael's proposing, because it already happens today. So it's not different. I just want to make that clear. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh... I was just saying that it's not the RTDM that Michael wants to control. So yeah, it would be 20% more than what PNF can do today. Uh, but I think that changing from PNF to Michael also means like more less 
less checks and balances, and, and that's bad in a sense and good in another, in another sense. Uh, PNF always tried to to make what the whole community uh, wanted. I, I mean, they, they're trying to be very balanced, and, and I think that they were quite good at it, and and they did a good job man managing the, the funds for the for the community. But you can see that as they are not so focused on on a specific tasks. Michael seems to want the same power, but also being able to to be more more arbitrary on what he's going to spend and more focused on less topics and do not spend like trying to be fair for all or and everything that comes into the community and says, okay, we want to build this or that. I, I think that, that that's where the difference lies today. Uh, PNF is more broad in what it, he, it is willing to fund, and Michael won't be so so broad. Yeah, that that might be the case in terms of he might not focus on other areas of the community, and that's you know that's yeah that that's obviously what uh, what the proposal is you know essentially about. Uh, uh, you know, it would be under his discretion instead of kind of like a group. Um, but one thing I would say, though, is 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 I I wouldn't necessarily say that PNF wasn't very good at focusing on very specific things um, for like moving things forward. Uh, actually, before all of this happened, um, uh, I you know I was obviously working on Shan tokenomics, uh, and then Michael reached out and asked to. Uh, We'd, I'd be down to jump on a call to talk about tokenomics. So I said, sure, jumped on a call. We talked about tokenomics. And he mentioned, hey, you know, we like, I think that I've heard from some suppliers that, you know, they think it'd be better to increase the APY uh, for nodes. And I said, okay. Um, and then he also mentioned, you know, having some kind of airdrop or something for Shannon. So I was like, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I don't disagree. Uh, I, I definitely don't disagree because I've always, I've always been talking about how I do think we need to create and keep incentive on the uh, node supply side, which is why I also introduced Gandalf, right? Um, so anyways, we talked. Uh, the ideas that he originally pitched to me, uh, I, I, I told him why they wouldn't work, um, but uh, we left the call, which is kind of an understanding of like, yeah, what if there's something we can do in Morse? to increase APY, right? And because I had literally finished the Shannon stuff, I spent like that week kind of looking through things. Uh, and I was thinking of, okay, well, what if we were to pre-mine up to 3 million or 3 billion and then and then cap at 3 billion and then utilize that per basically like 40% or 45% or something like that uh, increase to the supply. We kind of have those tokens to be able to do airdrops, to be able to increase APYs, to be able to do all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and what we could do is we could, you know, we don't have to make like mass changes now, uh, but what we could do is do an airdrop for people's performance in Morse at that time. So it actually doesn't slow anything down. So anyways, I, I was working on all this stuff um, because, you know, feedback was coming in, provide, like I've never, I, it has been a long time since I've heard a provider or providers reach out to me at all to talk about specifically like, uh, you know, increasing rewards. Um, I, I know that I've also talked to the PNF team and like providers weren't reaching out saying we need to increase this rewards. They were reaching out to Michael, uh, the uh, like two providers were reaching out to Michael to say this, that I know at least. Um, but uh, the other providers, uh, you know, th this just wasn't being publicly discussed. It was being discussed between Michael and them. So. All I'm saying is uh, I don't think that the structure that PNF had was limiting in any way. I think it just depends on who's doing it. When I'm doing tokenomics, I think we do move very fast for what for what we uh, uh, for what I do. Um, I don't know, I'm not perfect by any means, and I need people like I need people around me to help check me and you know everything like that. All this ends up being a team process, regardless of Mike's the one who. Uh, 
green lights it or uh, someone, you know, like myself just takes it upon, you know, takes the initiative to just do it, right? Um, it's still going to take people to be a part of it. Um, and especially when it comes to tokenomics, Michael does need people around him that understand the other elements of the ecosystem. Um, and so that, that would happen regardless of if it was happening with PNF or if it was happening with Michael. So anyways, that's at least my feedback. That's, I, I, I was excited and actually Boytech and PNF was actually on board with the concept of doing airdrops and uh, pre-mining. Uh, that was all literally being discussed uh, when all this dropped. So I think what? at least for me, that, that showed me that you can actually get cool process if people are talking, communicating, you can actually, you know, things can happen. And I believe PNF was structured to have things happen. Uh, I don't think that they'll actually happen uh, any faster because uh, they still require on people to vet this stuff out and actually make it happen. It still requires people to execute, um, regardless if it was the label PNF or uh, under Michael. So, anywho, that's my thought. Yeah. Uh, what what you were talking about, high uh, high IP-wise, or how imprint tokens and add it to the total supply to do airdrops and so on, are all stuff that goes away from what, uh, how, to, how to phrase it, it's not, that it's not serious, it's just unorthodox from an economic perspective, because it does not fit everywhere. It's like, to tomorrow, the government goes and prints half of the monetary base and says, okay, I, we are going to give everyone some little bills to, because I don't know, they, 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 they are great people in our country. Uh, and, and that ends up in disaster normally. So I would probably be against it because it's not economically logical. It goes against what we were building all the time for the tokenomics of Shannon. And if people vote on giving themselves money, it will always end, almost always end up seeing people saying, okay, let's give us ourselves money because nobody will be responsible or all, everyone will be responsible on voting on such PIP. And the PNF won't be responsible because it will be acting upon the vote of the people. Here, we, the, the voters of Pocket. Uh, and I think that's wrong if you try to, or at least that mechanism to me sounds like you are trying to dilute the guilt, the guilt of creating these tokens out of thin air or of extracting value from the rest of the token holders. So I would like to have a head to cut if someone does like something like that, because I wouldn't vote for it because it ruins the tokenomics, it has ruined countries. So, uh, but this is a DAO and this is a democracy and that could be voted on. I, I don't I don't like that. So in, Michael now is proposing to do something like that, but now he's the one that's going to take the decision. He's the one that's going to be held accountable for it. The one that's going to ruin his reputation if he does that. And, that that's like different differences is what to say. Okay, if you go that way, and I told him Michael that personally that he was stepping into a shit hole, and uh, it it's a gamble, but it's not a gamble that a DAO can play because now nobody will be responsible. And uh, I I don't like to mix tokenomics like real tokenomics like the one that we are building for Shannon with tokenomics for the crypto community that likes airdrops and stuff like that. So for me, it's, it's two different paradigm, paradigms. Or we keep the community, PNF, DAO, and everything, and we keep on serious tokenomics, or we go the crypto community side. There, there's no in between. In between, it's just like, make no sense in my head, at least. And I know Michael is not suggesting serious tokenomics. Uh, and I told him and I put that in the post. It's it's another paradigm. It's it's not 
it cannot be evaluated with the same rules that we evaluated every other tokenomics proposal in the forum because it's it's another thing. Quite a few chats on the sidebar, so I'm not even going to try and read out all of them. I'd encourage y'all to have them open. I'm not in any rush to uh, close the call if people still have uh, things that they'd like to share. Maybe I can add up some to something that High Five Law says before sure. that we would be giving up the community if we bought this. Um, I I think that there is no guarantee that there will be a community after after we bought this. That that's for sure because we are actually giving up the community power for at least two years on, on the things that matter to us. But I think that the the community will still work uh, as, as a suggestion mechanism. As where is going if we, if we build up some some real solutions or something like that or, or whatever we we normally do in the community. It's not like Michael will ignore everything that we. That we are doing, or, or at least I hope that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be like that, because that would be like a, a really shitty leader, and, and it's not what I feel when I have worked with him or with Orshansky. They, they tend to be more receptive. So I think it's rather false to think that community will explode. Maybe, maybe if they are decide to ignore completely ignore the community, the community will itself disappear. But I think that the community will keep on trying to to push what they think is important. And if Michael hears the community, the community will remain active because it will feel that it's answering what the community requires or, or the community asks for. If it's if it's in I don't know, if if it's compatible to what he thinks. So uh, I don't know what happened between High Five Law and and Group. It seems like a lot happened there, uh, but this has not been my case. I have never been part of group, at least. Whenever I worked with the with the protocol team, they have been pretty uh, receptive to to my comments, and and I had no no saying. I was just a mere observer on those calls. I cannot say the same for for group because they are a private company and I've never worked with them aside from what we all know that we are pocket scan and they sometimes require things from us. But at least my interactions with Mike and, and Olshansky or the dev teams, the part that they were for the community of group, they, they worked all right. Any other closing thoughts? We've certainly seen uh, or heard from a number of folks, but there are some leaders in the community that I would certainly like to hear more from.
Okay. Well, it seems that we've come to the end of uh, the points to be made uh, as part of the group conversation. I'll expect to continue to see uh, more feedback on this as uh, we move forward and find the path uh, uh, ahead from here. But uh, I appreciate everyone taking the amount of time that they've had to voice their opinions and, and provide feedback on what is clearly a, uh, a contentious and uh, in some ways transformative uh, set of choices ahead of us right now. We will see y'all again next week. And hopefully next week we can actually get to the demonstration of the workbench for AI that Ramiro has been working on. I suppose a lot of that will have to do with what the current political state is at the time. But same channel, same time next week. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Sheikhs, for uh, quite literally uh, the endurance that you've been showing throughout this. So it really, really a- appreciate you. <laughs> Help and keep all this moving. <laughs>